So let's begin uh, our topic for today's Amazon Athena. So what is Athena? So Athena is nothing um, but it is a serverless interactive query service that analyzes the data that is present inside the Amazon S3 bucket and it uses standard SQL for that. So uh, Athena, uh, the most important uh, part of Athena is that the compute and the storage part of Athena are separate. That is, we can uh, compute the queries inside of Athena, but the storage uh, of the data is uh, provided separately. That is, we can store it inside Amazon S3 bucket. So uh, in Athena, we do not need to store or upload any kind of data. We just need to perform the queries over there. And the data can be directly streamed in raw format from the S3 bucket. So the formats that are supported by Athena are uh, text, CSV, JSON, all these uh, are the formats that we can store uh, directly into Amazon S3 and it can be streamed inside of Athena. The most optimized formats are ORC and Parquet uh, that increases the performance and lowers the cost. Uh, and uh, in Athena, we can perform all the large joins, window functions and arrays. And since Athena uses S3, so the durability and the availability of uh, S3 adds on S3 advantage with Amazon Athena. So uh, does anyone have any queries? Okay. Moving forward with the underlying technology. So Athena uses Presto. Uh, as the underlying technology. So what is Presto? Presto is again, uh, it is an open source SQL engine, a search engine, uh, the uh, SQL query engine uh, that is used for big data. And even Presto does not have its own storage. So hence it is used as the underlying technology behind Athena. So uh, let's compare that why do we prefer Athena uh, in comparison to other databases or other data warehouses. So uh, regarding the compute and storage, as we already have talked about, Athena does not provide storage. It only works on the compute part. So the compute and the storage are separate. Uh, the storage is maintained by the S3 bucket of Amazon. While in the other databases, uh, it is not separate. We can perform queries as well as store the data in the same place. Next, uh, we talk about the DML interface. So Athena, in Athena, we do not have DML interface. That is the data manipulations can't be done inside of Athena. The insert update queries cannot be performed. While in the other databases, we get that uh, uh, functionality that we can uh, perform the DML operations. Lastly, coming on to the resources part, the input output. Since Athena does not uh, focus on the storage part, hence all the resources are uh, completely uh, managed or utilized into the query processing. So we uh, all the uh, resources are uh, not, uh, any resources are not wasted on the modeling of the data, but they are completely focused on the query processing. While in the other databases, uh, the storage and the compute part both are managed or the resources are shared for both the processes. So these are the three major differences uh, that we get in Athena uh, with the other databases. Moving on, uh, let's talk about the pricing. Uh, so Athena is uh, very cost effective uh, uh, compared to the other databases, the SQL operations are completely free. The concurrent queries we can run freely. We are only charged uh, $5 per TB for the data that we scan. And we do not have to pay for idle. And rest, the storage that we uh, uh, get from the S3, that are the standard rates. 
for the S2. So this is the pricing. Moving on uh, to the optimizations. So uh, we can optimize, we can definitely optimize the performance and pricing of the Athena uh, by doing some of the, uh, by applying some of the techniques. So some here are uh, by partitioning your data. So what does partitioning means? Partitioning, nothing, partitioning is nothing, but we divide the table into parts and put all the related data together into those parts. So what happens is when we go on to querying that data, so virtual columns are created and we directly go on to those columns and get our data directly into that partition. So we do not need to uh, worry about the other data that uh, we do not have to scan that part of data that we do not have to bother about. So partitioning helps over here. Next is uh, bucketing your data. So bucketing is another way of partitioning only where we put uh, or we group together the rows based on the column names together into multiple buckets. And uh, when we need to uh, query the data, we go on to that particular bucket. Uh, and this dramatically reduces the number of uh, rows of the data that is to be read. So this also increases the performance and hence uh, it in, uh, de, uh, redu reduces the pricing also. Next uh, is uh, again, uh, if we use smaller or compressed form of data, then again, uh, streaming the data from S Amazon S3 to Athena reduces the network traffic and hence again, uh, the optima it is optimized it optimizes and uh, uh, the query is run uh, in a better format or a better time next uh, is the columnar data so uh, it is again as we have already talked if we save the data in parquet and apache orc formats then the data uh, is optimized properly since these are the two formats that employ column wise compression and multiple other compressions and encodings. So this helps uh, optimize uh, the data and we can uh, increase the performance by that also. And uh, lastly, uh, by simple uh, normal SQL optimizations that is optimizing your order bys in the queries, joins, group by and approximate functions these are the basics that we have already uh, know about uh, how to optimize our SQL queries. So that is uh, we can apply into Athena also. So doing uh, by applying all these techniques, we can save up to from 30% to 90% on your per query cost. And this increases the performance uh, a lot. So these are the optimizations. Does anyone have any query until now? Okay. So how to use Athena? Very simple. Uh, we just need to log in into our AWS consoles and open Athena. Athena console looks something like this. We uh, need to set up our data source that is our Amazon S3 and AWS Glue uh, that I have chosen for my uh, usage since AWS uh, Glue has a crawler inside it and a crawler helps you to get schema information automatically. That is, it creates a table automatically uh, from the data that is present inside of S3. We do not need to create structure of the table and store the data inside it. So crawler helps uh, in that. We just need to set up the crawler and run the crawler and we are good to go. We can start querying. We can see our table present inside of the Athena console on the left and we can simply go on querying and we can run our queries over here. So this is how we can run simple queries or complex queries uh, inside of Athena. So uh, 
let's sum up with the advantages that uh, what are the advantages that we get using Athena. So first is definitely serverless. We do not need to manage any kind of infrastructure or we do not need to pay for any kind of queries that we uh, do not run. We only pay for the queries that we run at that particular time. We do not need to pay for any ID conditions. We only pay for the data that we have scanned. Uh, next is schema on read. That means uh, whether we store our unstructured, semi-structured or structured data inside of S3, it is structured only when we read it and in uh, multiple views, however we want to. Next is, uh, next is the decoupled storage and compute. Again, the storage and the compute part are different in Athena. Uh, the storage is managed by S3 and computations, that is the queries we can run on Athena. So this uh, helps in saving the resources as well. Again, uh, security, talking about the security, it is IAM authenticated. So it is secure as well. And lastly, it provides uh, all the uh, uh, support for uh, open storage formats. It works with a wide range of open source form file formats. Even we can store digital data inside of uh, using this. So these were the advantages. So we have already talked about the advantages and what all functionalities does Athena provide. So it gives us a clear view until now that in what conditions uh, we should be preferring Athena over other databases. But uh, let me tell you about the limitations as well. Athena does have limitations. So uh, what are the limitations? First is again, uh, DML interface. We do not have DML interface in Athena. That is, we cannot insert, update or delete uh, the data inside of Athena or we cannot alter the data present inside of S3. Optimizations is limited to queries. That is, we can only optimize our queries and the view that uh, our data is getting, but we cannot optimize the data that is stored inside of S3. We cannot optimize that. Uh, uh, the next is multi-tenancy means pool resources. That is, the uh, entire global user base is computing for the same shared resources. So since the resources are shared, the query performance fluctuates sometimes for people. So this is again one drawback. Another is uh, Athena does not provide indexing. That is if we uh, put joins between two large tables, uh, hence uh, it reduces uh, the performance since joins are a very heavy operations. So uh, this is another drawback. And lastly, the partitioning, that is uh, for efficient running of queries, uh, we need to partition our data. And uh, while we partition, we need to keep that in mind that every 500 partitions that you scan adds one second to your query. So if we uh, partition our data too much, that is also uh, might delay uh, up to one second your query. So these are the limitations. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so that was uh, introduction to Amazon Athena and few of the points that will help you choose that if Athena, uh, we can choose Athena for uh, our, uh, our work or not or we can prefer any other databases. Let me know if anybody has any queries. Okay, 